All right, materials fans. So you and your lab partners have uh, labeled and measured and broken 30 different wood specimens. And now we're going to do the analysis. First thing I'm going to do is do the numbering. So if I just type 2 in the arrow key down, 3, 4, I could do that all the way down. Or I could left click and drag, then let go of the mouse button, then left click again on that as it turns to a black bold cursor and drag down. I'm holding the left mouse button dragging down until I get to 30 then let go and it'll automatically number them for me. Pretty smooth, huh? Now let's calculate the cross-sectional area. I'm going to tell Excel that we're going to use a formula so you type the equals sign. Notice it shows up here and up in this edit bar and then I'll left click on the X dimension Type in the times, which is the shift 8, the other dimension, y, and then I can just hit the enter key, and it calculates the area. That's all well and good. Do that over and over again all the way down, or the same scheme as I used a second ago. Get that mouse cursor in the bold mode, and then click and hold, holding the left mouse button, drag down, all the way to the bottom, release, and there it calculated the area for me. Now let's do the same thing for the failure st stress, excuse me, which is the load over the area. So we'll start with the equals. Left click on the load. That's a left click and release. Divided by, which is the slash key, the area, and hit enter. And there it calculated the failure stress. Do the same thing with that bold cursor drag down and there are all the stresses. Now while I've got that highlighted I think I'm going to reduce the number of decimal places it's showing by using the decrease decimal button. So if I just left click that repeatedly we can take all those decimal places out. Now let's go scroll down to the bottom here and calculate the mean which in Excel is going to be called the average. So if I could just start typing average there it is double click and then it wants me to tell it what to average so I'm just going to left click here and highlight up I'm left click and hold so I get to the top of the row let go of the mouse button and then I can scroll back down and say yeah that's what I wanted add the end parenthesis and hit the enter key so there's the mean the average in Excel. Next we're going to work on the standard deviation. That's going to take a couple of columns of calculation. We'll do it the long way uh, first. So first we'll do the RI minus RM column which is just hit the equal sign. Take that individual uh, value and then subtract the mean. So let's go to the bottom and left click there and that should do it, right? Hit enter. So that's that one. Now if I click and drag that down, there's something going wrong here, isn't it? Let's take a closer look. This first one, I'm going to take F7 and subtract F37. So cell F37 is down here. What about the next one? If I copy it down, it goes F8, F38, F9. Yeah, see it's incrementing down. This is what's called a relative reference. Yeah, essentially these formulas over here where we did the, the area is telling Excel take the cell 2 to the left of me and multiply it times 1, 1 to the left of me. So if we move down with that you can see that it increments nicely. This one on the other hand we need to use an absolute reference and what you can do is either type them or hit the F4 key if you keep hitting the F4 key it'll lock either the row or the column or both or you can just type those in manually and that is a an absolute reference so it'll always go to F37 hit enter on that copy that down and I missed one right at the end there but that should work fine so that's the difference between each individual failure stress and the mean now we're going to take that value and square it so equals this value 
and the shift six, the little carrot, and a two, that will square it. And all of a sudden we're in a panic because it doesn't fit in the box. So let's move the box a little bit, make it a little bigger, or you can reduce the decimal place and it'll still show up. Okay, that's that's the issue there. And I can left click that once, then grab the corner of it, drag it down. That should be a fine relative reference. And I could reduce the decimal places on that some, although it doesn't matter because this is part of a calculation. It's in the middle. It's not an answer, so you don't have to round it. Then we need to do the sum equals SUM for sum. And I'll highlight that whole column again. I just scroll up, grab that. So the sum of H7 to H36, type in the second, you know, the end parenthesis, and hit enter. So then we can use that in the formula down here. If you look at the, the formula itself, it's the square root of 1 minus n minus 1, excuse me, 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of ri minus rm squared. So we have this whole term, the sum ri minus rm squared, right there in that number. So all we have to do is multiply it times 1 over n minus 1 and square root it and we'll be all set. So, start with the equal sign. And we're going to have to do some parentheses here, I'm sure, to get the square root business. So let's do 1 divided by parentheses 30 minus 1, right, times this ri minus rm squared term. More parentheses. You see it colors them as it goes along, makes it easy to check. It follows the usual order of operations. And then you can raise it to the 0.5 power. And that should give me a standard deviation, which seems pretty reasonable. Or you can also do it. Let's, I'll show you how to edit in the, in the bar up, up here. Let's take the 0.5 out, and we can use a function called square root. Square root, right there double click and that should give me the same answer if I hit enter. I think that's the same answer, isn't it? You can always use the undo button, one of my favorites. There it goes back to the other one. Looks like about the same number, doesn't it? Very close. Yep, it's broken. Then we just have one more thing to calculate, the coefficient of variation, which is the standard deviation divided by the mean, so just equals, left click the standard deviation once, divided by the mean, and enter, and take some decimal places out of that, and that looks pretty good.